How you doing guys and welcome to another video and it's been a hot minute since I've been on camera. I think I say that like every other month, isn't it? Like, cause I'm, I'm always taking mad breaks, but I've been so busy with this film and um, you know, we're trying to work hard on getting it correct. That it's just no time for YouTube at the moment. But yeah, I wanted to come back on and you know, make a few ESM videos before we have to jump back into, you know, more filming and, and promotion and stuff like that. So what I want to talk about today is the EOS M and rigging it out. So you know I've done um, rig videos in the past, I don't know, maybe going back about a year and a half now, two years, and cho choosing different rigs. And I've learned a lot in, in that time about, you know, modular rigs and uh, how to, you know, keep them well balanced and how quick can you switch from gimbal to tripod and all that kind of stuff. I see so many people putting out rigs and don't get me wrong, they look pretty, but for one, they're just far too expensive far too expensive and then you have to look at the, the you know the adaptability of, of your rig when you're when you're using it now you know when we look at the EOS M the EOS M most of us picked it up for what 60 70 80 quid maybe 120 if you bought it with a lens now you tell me the, the, the logic in spending, you know, I don't know, 200 pound on a, on a set of handles or maybe 199 on, on a cage and a handle. It don't make no sense to me. If, we, if you're buying the ESM, I'm telling you, there's three reasons why you've bought an ESM. One, that you want to get into video, uh, cinematography, videography, whatever you want to call it, and you want to get into it at the lowest point possible. Two, you live in a country where you, you don't earn that much money and this is your passion and you want to get into it. Three, you're already a DP or cinematographer or whatever, and you're looking for something that you can just knock around with, or you've sold off all your gear and you've moved into a new profession, but you still want to keep up with the, uh, you know, the cinematography game. That's pretty much the three reasons why you're going to buy EOS M, okay? And each, free, um, each of those three reasons does not warrant spending you know, 200, 300 on, on, on a rig. I don't care. You, if anyone disagrees with me, post it down below, okay? I do not care. I see so many people putting pretty rigs online. They look absolutely amazing. But the truth is, that's just bits and pieces what they've pulled off of their, you know, their 2,000, 3,000 pound camera. And it's just to make everything look pretty. Forget pretty. We want cheap. We want good quality and most of all we want it adaptable that we can change things around quickly. And this is what my videos mainly are all about. It's no fluff, no showmanship, it's just let's just get this thing done, you know, and, and as cheap as possible. So let's jump into that now. Okay guys, so this is what we're working with now. We've got my EOS M and it's got a few bits on there already. So first thing we're looking at is my EOS M100 cage and you've probably seen that in, other, um, in my other videos about you know, using this cage. Still, I'm gonna stand by it. It's the best cage that you can use for the EOS M but it does need a slight mod on the, on the mounting hole at the bottom where you have to drill a little bit out. If you don't wanna do that, the M50 cage is a good one or just find yourself a cheap half cage which is also fantastic. I've got the canvate handle which I spoke about many times. When you buy a canvate handle, it comes in a normal wood color but I sprayed this and I put this little um, cold shoe adapter to run aside as well. Um, I don't really recommend getting this, um, this uh, cam bait handle. I'd recommend getting a newer model which has got these screws which you can do up by thumb. That will be a lot easier to um, uh, build up and tear down your rig. But this one serves me well. It's been going for over a year now. No problems. It's solid as the day I brought it. Um, absolutely love it. And at the bottom here you can see I've got a, an Arca Swiss mount. This is actually a mount off of my uh, Mosa Air. Cost wise, we're already in about 22 pounds for the cage. A handle is about 17 pounds. This is a normal dummy adapter. We want to get a handle. So this is the U-Rig handle. And I've spoken about this handle so many times because this handle is under 20 pounds and I absolutely love this handle. Reasons why I love it is because it's got one screw that you can do up and it's a 3 8 screw, so it's the thicker one. It's also got the ARRI locking pins, the metal ARRI locking pins. Yeah, and, you, and you can also put your um, uh, 15 millimeter rod bar through the middle here and tighten it up if you want to mount your monitors or anything like that. So if we just put that on right now. And then let's put on a lens. So I've got the 24 to 105 here. And lastly, we are going to look at the NPF battery plate, which costs about 13 pounds with a cable. You should all know, you should all see one of these by now. I've got the metal pin here, which I've bent in a U shape. And the reason why I bend it in a U shape is because it slots into the back of the charger. And then as you've probably seen on my M50 videos, it slots into the back of the handle and done. I then run my cable through the middle, choose any one of those holes that you like. And then you can just run it through and then straight into the dummy battery at the bottom. And there is your rig, all done, okay? All sorted, you've got a solid rig there. It looks a lot similar, similar to my M50 rig, 
but it's a solid rig. Side handle, you've already got another handle on this side, so you can, it's, it's very stable. You've got your all day battery running all through there and just on the back there. How easy was that to build up? I mean, it's just a simple, it's just a simple rig, man. And then when you just hold it with one finger, it's nicely balanced as well, even though that hasn't got a battery in there, but that would balance it out even more. Nice rig. Okay, so moving on. This crazy thing. Now, what you're, what you're seeing here is we've got the small rig base plate underneath here, which is about 12 pounds. Then this plate here is the actual, oh, I, mean, I love this plate, man. I bought a couple of these plates. These plates cost about eight quid and they come with an, an Arca Swiss um, amount and then it comes on this plate. The reason why I love this plate so much is because all Arca Swiss mounts will fit on this, okay? So this is the one from my Moser Air. So if I wanted to say go to, you know, from normal handheld into handheld with follow focus, I could just, let me push that down a little bit, slide this on, tighten it up, tighten it up there, just that lever, get my follow focus, pull it back, and then tighten that up too. And now we've gone to normal handheld into like your super duper kind of handheld. So now I can just use my follow focus as well. Absolutely stunning. The small rig base plate, I'm gonna link that as well, which costs about 13 pounds. Um, and like I said, the mount which you actually put these onto is um, about eight quid. Now moving that aside, I just wanna show you, I actually have the same thing on my tripod. So let's see if I can get this tripod in view. So yeah, so I actually have the same one on my tripod. So the same mount which I had on here is the same one which I've got on my tripod. So if I wanna to go to tripod now, just literally loosen up your follow focus, loosen up your camera, slide the whole thing off, straight onto your tripod and tighten up. And you are ready to go tripod. How amazing is that? And even better still, take it off your tripod, bring out your gimbal, and then because it's already got the Moser Air um, uh, mount on there, I can literally just slide it straight onto the Moser Air, and then take, and then um, take, I would probably take off this handle here, and then you can be balanced on your Moser in seconds as well. So guys, so this is what I'm talking about when you're building a rig out. When you're building a rig, don't just build it because, and make it look fancy and spend a ton of money on it because you've got your fancy wooden handles and all that kind of stuff when in actual fact, it's gonna be useless out in the field because you've got to you know, take things off or you, it's not modular, you can't really build it around it. It's crazy. You want something that's completely modular so it's so easy to build and tear down and put up that you'll just be, you'll just be so happy that you, you took time in, in thinking about how you built it.
monitor. I don't really use a monitor too much on the um, on the EOS M. Sometimes I use my phone, sometimes I use a monitor, but most of the time I'll be using one of these, three quid. Slap that on the back and then you've got your um, your eyepiece there, okay? Oh, let me straighten that up a bit. There you go. And then you've got your eyepiece there. Proper handheld rig, yeah? When you're holding it up to your eyes and you're, and you're walking around, proper nice rig. And then, finally, we want to talk about the... Um, Filter, filter holder. This is a U-Rig filter holder. It costs um, about, how much it cost? I can't even remember now. It's very cheap though. I think it's about, about 15 quid or maybe less. Now basically what you've got is this kind of hinge um, filter holder here and this ring here which screws onto the lens. So what you do basically, you put that into the hole there, then you screw that onto the front of your lens And then you can put your filter in and then use whichever filter you want, put it up, put it down. But what I've done, I've actually adapted um, um, a, 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 like a contraption for mine. Um, and this is what I call my flag. So if you look at the shape of it, you can see it's quite nicely cut. It kind of bevels inwards that way, if that's a word. Um, and then you can see it's got some um, carbon fiber on the top there with a little Manfrotto sticker and 23. That's just to gloss it up a bit really. I didn't need to do that. And you can see this mad thing here, which is actually a filter. Now, I'll tell you the way I built this, but if you want me to go more in depth about it, I can do in the future. So basically what I've done, I've got a CD cover, a normal CD cover, what you'd get in a PlayStation game or a DVD movie. I've cut off the side, which doesn't hold the CD, so we've got the flat plastic. I've then taken an old normal UV filter, which I don't use anymore, got some bonding glue, put it all inside the filter and stuck this down, yeah? Then I just covered it with a bit of vinyl, a level look vinyl, and then cut the circle out, level look vinyl as well. On the other side, I've got normal carbon fiber vinyl and then a few stickers to make it look, um, look much nicer. This, you know, costs next to nothing. It, you know, I've, I've already got the filter holder. This old filter was scratched up in the drawer and obviously I've just got a CD case and, a, and, and vinyl, which cost me a pound each side. Right, now I've got a double use for this. So now if I put this on top and I just screw this on, now I actually have a built-in flag, a very lightweight flag. So anytime I've got any shade, uh, sun or lights that's coming in that's affecting my footage, I've got a nice looking flag here. This can be rotated different angles if you want. Because of the um, filter mount is rotatable, you can rotate it if you've got lights coming from the side or whatever and then just tighten it up, however, whichever direction you want. But absolutely amazing. I kind of modeled this off of the tilter one, but obviously it didn't cost me tilter money. It only cost me a couple of quid to 